What's going on everybody, it's Pixelated and we've been covering headphones on this channel for quite a while now that take advantage of the PS5's 3D audio tech, more specifically the Tempest audio engine which was built by Sony specifically for the PlayStation 5, you're not going to find it anywhere else, it's just built into the PlayStation 5 and that's just how it is. And before we get into that, I know it's been a minute since I've posted. Just know I'm not gone and I will be at full speed at some point. Today we're taking a look at a unique entry into the market. It's not the newest, it's been around for quite a while, even probably near the end days of the PS4, but it quite possibly could be, or may not be, the best that I've ever tried for the PS5. Now we'll get into why that is in a bit. The headset we're looking at today is the Odyssey Penrose. Now there's a blue one and a green one. The green one is the Penrose X and the blue one is just known as the Penrose. Now you need to know the difference between the blue and the green one just because, you know, it matters. Now if you're looking to game on the PS5, you should definitely know the difference between the blue and the green one. And if you regularly game on consoles, you probably already know the difference, the Penrose X. The green one is the Penrose X. It is made for the Xbox Series X, Xbox One X. It's for the Xbox. Don't get that one, get the blue one. The blue one is for the PS5, PS4, whatever you're playing on for the purposes of this video, we are focusing on the PS5. Now, this is the first wireless planar magnetic headset I've tried for gaming, and just the first wireless planar magnetic headset I've tried ever to begin with. You don't normally see a wireless planar magnetic headset. They do exist. They are out there in the wild, but they're not very common, and there's a reason for that. We'll get into that in a bit. But having a powerful wireless planar magnetic headset is a great feat for gaming. And the price certainly reflects that. Now there are two types of headphones you'll come across. Most of you will probably only come across one, but if you've seen this video or you're watching it right now, which you obviously are if you're listening to me, you will come across two kinds of headsets, two most common types. One is the dynamic driver headset and that is pretty much the most common. Everything I've reviewed on this channel has been a dynamic driver headset from the Steel Series Arctis 7P to the Razer Kyra Pro X to the Hyper X cloud to uh, i haven't reviewed the wireless but the wired version now i won't pretend to be an ear trained audiophile but i can tell you the difference between what i hear from this headset versus all the dynamic driver headphones i've used in the past and i'll tell you the difference shortly but first a word from the sponsor of this video skillshare now while i enjoy making these informative videos about tech for you all it does take time and a handful of skills to accomplish and i'm constantly trying to improve the process not only to save time and be more efficient but to deliver the information to you as clearly and effectively as i can i've recently had questions about how to represent myself and my brand online it can really get a little confusing sometimes that's when skillshare pops in skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity invest in yourself and your personal growth I decided to take the power of personal branding course by award-winning marketer and entrepreneur Hamza Khan in hopes to find answers to my questions about how to brand yourself online and ultimately tell your story your way while influencing and bringing value to the people. My key takeaway from this course was that there is a significant impact to telling your story online. While burnout and being on social media too often can have its downsides and you should definitely take breaks. Don't be on social media a lot. Now more than ever, it's important to tell your story your way because not only does it allow you to connect with people you otherwise never would, but because in today's world, your online presence is almost expected. It also opens a lot of doorways to opportunities. Being able to change my view on this subject matter has been very helpful in teaching me how to take control of my branding online and bring out a more consistent, effective message. So get online, do things, and tell people. Otherwise, someone else will tell it for you. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Are you an entrepreneur, a freelancer, a creative, or just someone looking to learn some new skills to bolster their tool belt? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography to graphic design, marketing, freelancing, even courses on productivity, Skillshare's got it all. The best part about this whole ordeal is that you can try it out for free. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go ahead and check it out. Okay, now getting back to the review, feel free to resonate with that like button. If you happen to enjoy the video at any point, raise the treble on that subscribe button for more videos and make sure to hit the noti bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you happen to decide that this headset is for you during the video, after the video, before the video, right now at this very moment, I've left a link in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. Now I'm going to preface this review by saying the first thing you should do once you get this headset is download the Odyssey HQ app and update the firmware. This headset came out before the PS5 and I promise you whatever newer firmware is out there has been designed to help this thing work better with the PS5. 
Now we're gonna take a look at a few characteristics of the headset, including comfort and audio quality during the review. So first let's start off with the comfort and it's gonna get really dicey real soon because look, this headset has a lot of great, amazing qualities, but the comfort is definitely not one of them. Now it's not fair to say that these are probably the most uncomfortable headphones I've ever worn because there are plenty of headphones that I've worn. You know, I've come from, we've come from way back in the day when we had those over ear headphones that had the band going from the back. There were so many uncomfortable headphones from back in the day. What I can say is if you're looking for the most comfortable headset, this is not the one. I have to say though, there's nothing really wrong with it, but you will notice initially when you put it on is that the fit just feels weird. It feels like it's not made for a natural head. It almost feels like they tested this on extraterrestrials and then brought it to us. It has this weird sort of shape and it's pretty stiff. It almost feels like it's pushing down on your cheeks a little bit. The padding itself is not uncomfortable. It's not that it's thin or anything, but it's just the shape of the headset. On top of being a planar magnetic headset, I believe is what makes it heavier than other headphones. It's actually quite heavy. It's not extremely heavy, but you definitely notice it once it's on your head. What I did realize though, is after wearing it for about a week or two, you actually get pretty used to it and it starts not to feel so uncomfortable. It still definitely doesn't feel like a natural fit like other headphones like the SteelSeries Arctis 7P, even the HyperX Cloud 2, they both feel much better on your head compared to the Odyssey Penrose. Now, as I said, the padding is not so bad on its own. It does feel a little firm at first, but eventually it breaks in. If you're looking for great audio quality, but you also want comfort, if comfort is your highest priority, then this might be a headset that will cause you some, uh, conflict of interest, let's say. Now, when it comes to the fit, there is a lot of promise in this headset. And again, trust me, we'll get into that, but the fit is definitely not where that promise is. This is where the issue is. This headset has many things going for it. Trust me, there is so much that we are about to unpack, but the fit is definitely not one of those things. The fit is definitely something that you don't want to unpack. You want to pack it back up, tape up the container, ship it back to Odyssey and figure out what went wrong. Now, to be fair, the headset is adjustable like every other headset, and it has the swivel cups, the cups swivel from left to right to sort of give you a little bit more of a natural fit, and that definitely helps. But the problem is just the way that it's designed. Something about this headset never feels like it just, just never feels like it fits perfectly to your head. It never feels like a perfect fit. It just always feels like there's something missing. Something about the headset just feels a little too rigid. It almost just feels like there should be a little bit more give this way to have it fit properly on your headset. Maybe if the ear cups swivel this way, that would solve the problem. The great thing about the fit though, is that the ear cups create this almost noise isolating feeling and it's not active noise canceling. The headset does not have active noise canceling, but it almost gives you probably the best passive noise canceling I've ever heard in a headset or not heard rather. I wanted to end this portion of the review off with a caveat though, that some people have taken it to the extreme. Some people love the sound of this headset so much that they've taken comfort into their own hands. This extreme DIY process is only recommended for people who are capable of the task. I do not condone such violence against your headset if you have paper hands like me, whether I use that term correctly or not, because I know I didn't, but you get it. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, there's a YouTuber by the name of the Techni who pretty much removed the ear pads and replaced them with custom ear pads he bought from online from a different company. I'm not going to go into the details. You can look into it on his video and decide whether you want to take the risk of removing something that is built into the headset and replacing it with custom ear pads from the internet. Apparently it helped out with the comfort a lot. He also put a little cushion wrap thingy on the headset that you can just get. So that's not the hard part. The hard part is the ear cups, but if you want to get into that, you can go ahead, look into it, see what you want to do. Okay, now the downside set aside, we are going to get into the audio quality and this is where the headset really shines. It makes up for pretty much all of its glaring flaws with the audio quality. It's great sound quality, great 3D audio performance. Um, I tried it with games like Warzone, Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, a lot of PlayStation 5 exclusives as well as Warzone, which is the shooter. And the 3D audio is incredible and the sound quality is just bar none. When you're playing Ratchet and Clank, you can hear sound effects from all around you. You can really accurately pinpoint where they're coming from and there's no distortion. Bass is not extremely overwhelming. Everything is balanced so perfectly. You get this warm, crisp sound. It's not punchy or overwhelmingly bassy. Sometimes with games, with certain headsets, you'll hear explosions and they'll just sound extremely loud, a little painful to the ear if 
they're being too punchy but with this headset everything is almost perfectly balanced perfectly proportioned and on top of that the 3d audio performance is amazing the directional audio is just so good when i was playing ratchet and clank for example when i was playing as ratchet in the city you could hear all the hovering cars from different directions and you could hear them pretty clearly it almost feels like you're there it almost takes you a minute to realize how much more immersive it is to have sound quality that is so much better and so much more accurate than something that might have too punchy bass or the directional audio might not be the greatest now overall this is great audio performance but for someone who might enjoy punchy bass or something overwhelming like when you hear explosions if you want to hear it to be if you want it to sound really loud and overwhelming then this might not be the headset for you you can try tuning it through the Odyssey HQ app. You can try tuning EQs because you can have different EQ presets based on the app. Now, when playing a game like Returnal, I've always had difficulty critiquing the sound quality of a headset with that game because that game is super loud and everything just sort of, all the sound effects just sort of blend together with a lot of headphones. But the Penrose is top notch. Never have I been able to praise the Returnal sound design so much than when I use the Odyssey Penrose. And the Odyssey Penrose passes in flying colors for this game for both of those characteristics, for a directional audio as well as a pleasant sound. Again, in Returnal, you get that warm, crisp sound. You don't get overwhelmed by the bass. You get a lot of clarity. So even sound effects, even little details in sound effects that you didn't hear before, you will hear it on this headset. And I'll be fair with you. I did not think it was going to be possible in this game to be able to get that type of audio quality and that sort of distinct sound just because the sound design is so loud. I did try this headset on Spider-Man Miles Morales. I did the street walk test that I've been doing pretty recently where I walk around the streets as Spider-Man instead of doing the combat and everything else that you would typically expect someone to do in the game. I just walk around and try to hear the sounds of the city and where the people, when people are talking, where their voices are coming from, what they're saying, who's saying it, if I'm able to pinpoint that. I know the headset is doing a good job and this headset does not disappoint. Once again, the Odyssey Penrose does a great job with all of it. You can tell where all the sounds are coming from. You can hear them very, it's very crisp, very clear. Now this is great for all of us who love all types of games, different genres, different playing styles, whatever you want. This is great for us, but there's that certain sect, that certain category of people that we haven't touched on yet, and that is the FPS shooters. That's right, our FPS shooters, look, you want directional audio in Warzone, you want a great sound experience, you're getting that with this headset as well. Now when using the Odyssey Penrose on Warzone, I played with the boost high settings and I can hear people walking around me, several levels above me, below me, whatever direction they're coming from, this headset performs so great with directional audio. Now if you want a little bit more immersion, you can use different audio settings, whatever your preference is. Because this headset is so good, you will probably still be able to determine directional audio better than what you would on other headphones. However, for me, I did happen to find the boost high settings most useful. I would also strongly advise creating an EQ preset with the Odyssey HQ app, whether it's on your phone or on your computer, and we'll talk about that in a bit. In general though, the audio coming through this headset is crisp, it has a great, somewhat distant sound stage to play with all the audio. You can do whatever you want to it because of that somewhat distant sound stage. It's better than any other PS5 headset I've tried, including my favorite, the Arctis 7P. Um, it does come pretty close at times, but to be honest, it's realistically, it's a no contest. The Odyssey Penrose comes out on top every time when it comes to audio quality. I do have a few nitpicks. I still enjoy listening to my music through the Sony WH-1000XM3s way more than I do with the Odyssey Penrose. I get that these are gaming headphones and that they're not specifically made for music, but they're also planar magnetic headphones and they're very expensive. For the price that you're paying and for the fact that it produces great audio for video games, you would think it would do the same for music. And to be fair, you do get a different music experience with this and it's enjoyable, but for some reason it still doesn't stack up to a headset like the Sony WH-1000XM3. So if you plan on buying the Odyssey Penrose to switch between gaming and music, that is something you have to consider. It's not necessarily a bad sound, but it definitely is different. And the headset out of the box is not bad, but if you really want to take full advantage, this is one of those headsets where you have to nurture it. You have to go into that EQ preset and adjust it to what you prefer. One helpful hint with the EQ preset is that when you adjust it, you will notice that the volume does get lower 
and I thought this was a big issue. I thought this was just a giant glitch that they didn't realize, or maybe they realized and didn't want to deal with. And I thought this was just ridiculous. Why would you let that happen? But the headset is actually designed this way. When you adjust the EQ preset, it will lower the volume. And all you have to do is increase the volume, crank it back up on the headset with the volume scroll wheel. But just know when that happens, that is by design. If you read the instruction booklet, you will see that it is in there and they do make mention of it. It's buried in the instructions. And if you don't read it, you will probably miss it just like I did for the first few days. So there you go. Saved you a bit of reading, saved you a bit of digging. You're welcome. Okay, so this is the mic test. As you can probably tell, the mic quality is pretty good. It does cut off at some points. The noise gate can be a little finicky. You can reduce or increase the mic gain by using the mic volume scroll wheel at the back. If you reduce it low enough, it'll basically just mute the mic. It won't pick up anything you're saying. It's almost like a mic gain as well as a noise gate at the same time. It's kind of cool. Uh, I don't mind it. The quality though of the mic itself is crystal clear and that's probably what's most important. The mic does have side tones. If you want side tones, you just hold the mic volume scroll wheel. You click it and hold it in place until the side tones turn on. Then you can hear yourself. I do find the side tones a little finicky. It does sound a little weird when you're talking. The way it's dispersed isn't my favorite. I don't know what it is. It just kind of seems kind of weird. But overall, this is probably one of my favorite mics on a game gaming headset, the sound isn't too staticky, none of the sounds stand out, nothing gets muffled. Overall, this mic has really impressed me. It doesn't get overwhelmed, it doesn't get too distorted when you're getting too loud, and being able to adjust the mic volume on the headset is a great feature. It's a huge plus instead of having to bury yourself in the PS5's various menus to get to the mic volume, which honestly isn't too bad, but again, it's still a lot easier to just do this and adjust the mic volume instead of going into the PS5 menu in-game. You could be in a heated battle in multiplayer in some multiplayer online competitive game. You don't want to be going into menus getting shot up while you're doing that. So definitely a plus. Now this headset has every feature you can think of under the sun. Every feature that every gaming headset has, starting off with the volume scroll wheel. It's got a mic scroll wheel, most likely for your side tones. I haven't really used it, but that's most likely what it's for. We've got an aux cord input in case you want a game with a wired cable if you don't want to use the wireless connectivity we've got a usb-c slot right here for charging or for connecting to your computer and using the odyssey hq app to your computer and we've got a port for the mic detachable mic plug it in and take it out if you don't want it on your face while you're playing maybe a single player game or if you're listening to music you're just browsing on your computer you don't want this thing sticking in front of you then you can just take it out this headset also comes with a USB dongle. Obviously, that's how you connect to your PS5 with it. It also has Bluetooth connectivity, so you can connect it to your phone. It also has multi-device, not multi-device connectivity, but you can connect the wireless USB dongle as well as the Bluetooth. You can run two connections at the same time, basically. You can run the Bluetooth connection and the wireless connection to your PS5 or to whatever you have the USB dongle connected to, and both audio streams will go into the headset. So that is an amazing feature that you don't get with a lot of gaming headphones, but you do with this one. And for the price, I would say I would be pretty upset if they didn't offer it in this headset. Aside from that, you have memory foam ear pads, some cushioning up here. You have 100 millimeter planar magnetic drivers and planar magnetic drivers usually they are pretty big compared to dynamic drivers which are usually around 40 to 50 millimeters that's also what contributes to the weight of this headset unfortunately it's just something that comes with planar magnetic headphones but these don't feel too bad on your head when it comes to weight it's really just a fit that's kind of weird okay moving on to the pricing this thing when i bought it was priced at 429.99 canadian dollars Again, this headset is not cheap. Recently, I looked at Amazon though, uh, Amazon Canada, and it seems to be priced at 399 Canadian dollars. So it's not as bad as 429, but it's still pretty expensive. Again, this is for good reason though, because one, planar magnetic headphones, and that's not normally a good reason. That's not necessarily a good reason to price something really high, but when they're of this quality, this audio quality, then it makes sense. Again, it's also very well built. The sound quality speaks for itself, quite literally. It is bar none for a gaming headset, especially a wireless gaming headset at that. One word of advice though, if you're an average consumer, you just wanna buy a pair of headphones, you just wanna put them on your head and be happy with the way they sound, this may not be the route to go for you. Um, some might struggle to understand that because 
when a headphone is priced so high, you expect it to perform great right out the box. And these will perform great right out the box, but you will really need to tune them the way you want to tune them with the presets, with the EQ, using the app, so you can get the sound that you prefer. Again, with this pricing also comes some downsides, like when you get a headphone this expensive, you want the quality of life features to be there. And some of those quality of life features include having a really good fit, for whatever reason, this headset is lacking in that. On top of that, the battery life is not the greatest, understandably so, but also with a price that high again, you expect to get better battery life. These two things will probably be the two things that stick out to you the most when you use this headset. And for the price, you're gonna wish that this headset had both of those features, or at least improved version of both of those features. For me so far, because I know the battery life is lower than typical headphones, I usually start charging it whenever I'm not using it. It does tend to last me through the day sometimes, but I don't normally use it throughout the entire day. It does tend to last me throughout the day most of the time, and that's probably because I don't use it all day, but if I did, it would be a different story. So that's something you have to consider. Now, when it comes to design, this headset has quite a few unique features and many, many, many design cues that you probably wouldn't see so many of on one headset. But in this case, you do like these stripes and the Odyssey uh, font right here. It just makes it look like a race car decal. That's not something I'm a big fan of, but I do enjoy the little blue stripe hits right here, as well as this honeycomb hexagon design pattern on the ear cups. As we all know, there are two categories of gamers, the gamers that do like over-designed, overly somewhat sometimes tacky designed gaming accessories. And then there are those of us who like the nice sleek gaming accessories with a little bit of a gaming hit here and there, but not too crazy. This obviously veers off to the kind of overly done design that gets a little bit tacky when you look at the print over here, you look at some of the hexagonal stuff right here. They did a good job by making the headset black and making it a little bit more subtle if you're the type that doesn't want all that stuff. For me, it does hit a little bit of that overly done design, but because it's all black, you don't really notice it that much, so it doesn't look too bad. It's almost like they found the perfect balance between overly designed and also not too flashy, not too tacky looking. It kind of sucks to say this, but it almost looks like, to me, it looks like the headset version of a Dude Bro modded Toyota Supra, something along that line. And of course, I always love when something comes with a detachable mic because a lot of the times I don't want a mic in front of my face. I would prefer a retractable mic, but sometimes I'm sure there's a lot of tech in here that makes it difficult to have a retractable mic, or maybe someone has a patent on it, <clears throat> Steel Series, which is why you don't see it that often. I totally made that up in my head. It's actually super flexible. There's a lot of give, so it doesn't feel like you're putting too much pressure to bend it the way you want it to. Okay, now moving on to the good and bad, starting off with the good, of course, the most important good is the phenomenal sound quality. This thing sounds amazing. It's probably the best thing I've heard using it with my PS5. Yes, it's better than the Arctis 7P and the 7P Plus, which both sound exactly the same, just different features. Um, it's got an excellent feature set, basically everything you could ask for in a gaming headset and more. Bluetooth, wireless connectivity, being able to connect your PS5, your phone at the same time. Another good is the detachable cardioid mic. Again, for the various reasons I've mentioned previously, to be able to wear this headset without having a thing sticking in front of your face when you're not gaming, if you want to use this for anything other than gaming. Okay, moving on to the bad. Starting off with the battery life. Again, battery life is not the greatest. It's not the longest out there. It's also not the worst, but with the way current headphones are going where they are able to last 12 hours plus, a lot of headphones are lasting 30 hours. The new SteelSeries Arctis 7P Plus lasts 30 hours. Previous HyperX Cloud 2 wireless headphones, those last 30 hours. This thing lasts about seven to 10 hours, not the best. The next thing is the comfort and the fit. Again, as I said before, amazing, phenomenal sound quality, amazing feature set, but where it lacks, it really lacks, and it really lacks in the comfort and fit department. Um, to be fair, once you wear it, maybe for a few weeks, the weight, you kind of get used to the weight, you don't feel the weight on your head anymore, it just becomes the norm. Also, the ear pads sort of break in, so you don't feel the, the clamping force, you don't feel it as much. It is, it is a tad strong initially, but it definitely gets better. However, obviously, it would be better to not have those issues in the first place. You can try to do the extreme DIY corrections that I've mentioned earlier, if you want to, again, only if you're willing to dismantle certain things and maybe possibly not have them go to their original form. Another thing that I haven't really mentioned in this review is the wireless range. The connectivity, the wireless range is not as far as I had hoped. A lot of the headsets that I use, the Arctis 7P, the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless, they all allow me to walk further away from my computer or my PS5 than this headset does before disconnecting. This headset disconnects at a relatively close range. Like for example, my main concern is usually when I want to go 
to the bathroom, if I want to take a walk to the bathroom or to the kitchen to fix something up, uh, usually my HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless is good for that. The Arctis 7P is good as well, although sometimes it gets a little spotty near the further ranges, but this headset disconnects quite quickly before I make it to my destination, almost right outside of my destination, whether it's the kitchen or the bathroom. That's pretty much just laying it all out there for you. That's Those are the two spots that I go to. When it comes to your PS5 though, or wherever you plan on using this, it will most likely be fine. If you don't wanna go and do other things, if you're not that type of person, it probably won't be a problem for you. Or even if you do, you can just take them off or if you don't mind them being disconnected and then reconnecting once you come back. And finally, it's the price. Understandably so, the price is pretty high. It is a set of wireless planar magnetic headphones. Very rare to see something that performs this well as a planar magnetic headphone that is wireless. You don't find a lot of wireless planar magnetic headphones. They're typically usually wired as with most audiophile headphones. So the price is somewhat hard to swallow when you realize the comfort and the fit is not that great and the wireless connectivity is the range is not the greatest and the battery life is a little bit lacking. But other than that, this is a great headphone. I would definitely recommend these even with the downsides. That's just how good they are. And that's my review of the Odyssey Penrose. Would you grab the Odyssey Penrose for your PS5 or for someone else who plays with their PS5 or for other reasons? Let me know in the comments below. Again, if you decide this headset is for you, I've left a link in the description where you can go ahead and check them out. That's it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Pixelated has the Odyssey. Audacity. I don't know.